Hello, this is, yes, you guessed it, on the 12th day of Christmas, I'm going to share with you 12 thoughts to ponder. <laughs> yes, and I thought, what better place to tell you about 12 thoughts to ponder than in the space where I do my most pondering. If we can just find people who are willing to be vulnerable, if we can find people who are willing to just say, you know what, I'm going to take off this mask. I want you to see my mess. I'm an imperfect person, but I have allowed God to come in and shape me to be the woman I am today. So in this season where there's been so much uncertainty and anxiety and there's been some times that God has really burdened me with some prayers. And I'm going to show you this little clip. It's going to be probably a little tough to watch because I don't look very pretty and I'm really crying out to God. But I want to show it to you without much explanation. But it's definitely a thought to ponder. Wow, this is probably the most raw and real video I think I've ever made in my life that I've actually been able to share. And I'm so sorry for people seeing me cry right now this way, only because I want you to know I'm okay. But there's somebody out there that's not okay. Somebody is losing hope. Somebody can't go on thinking about ending your life. Please don't. Please don't. Whether you're, whether you're a strong powerhouse woman or man of God who like just been on the journey, maybe you're, maybe you're, you know, wrapped up in some addiction that you can't break, or maybe you feel alone because you feel the pressure of the call or whatever. Maybe you're just um, trying to figure out if God is real, wherever you are, whatever you need, just ask him. Like we could have all the best um, uh, speakers, we could have all the best techniques, but at the end of the day, we just need to feel loved. In John 15 and 5, that I am the vine, we are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, the fruit of love joy and peace and long suffering guys we are we are growing in some long suffering some self control like there's all these things right but apart from him we can do nothing january 2020 i woke up to realize i had a dream i was learning to make bread from scratch i had all these ingredients and i was so excited that I was doing something new for the first time and I was excited, you know, and had all the ingredients to make bread from scratch, get all ready, get the bread made, and I'm taking it out of the oven and it's totally flat. The bread is flat. And I'm just like, what? The bread is flat? What happened? I had all the ingredients. I don't know. I don't understand. And um, someone said to me, Vien, look, you, yes, you had all the ingredients, but you forgot to put in the key ingredient of yeast. Just like yeast is the key ingredient in bread to help it rise, prayer is the key ingredient in your life that helps you rise. No matter what ingredients you use, please do not leave out the key ingredient of prayer. I wanna to talk to you about endurance. Endurance, uh, physical, and emotional endurance. They're two different things, but kind of require the same concepts, right? When this COVID season first, uh, we started the season, that was one word that God actually really impressed on my heart, and that is endurance. And today, I am working on some physical endurance because I realized that while I'm getting up and making a few steps, I'm not really doing anything to you know, foster that endurance to keep going farther than a few steps. So um, I'm giving up uh, that cool feeling of making two steps without anything. And I am choosing to use my walker to make more steps. Huh. So was it easier for me to hop in my chair and zip to the bathroom? Yes, of course, that's what I do all the time. Why would I want to take my walker out to like take five minutes just to almost get to the bathroom and back 
uh, instead of just zipping in my chair. In the first few verses of Hebrews chapter 12, it uh, tells us to um, run the race with endurance uh, and that we need to press forward because if we don't work on our endurance, we won't make it. And in this season where there's, there's intensity of our emotions are high, uh, intensity of um, our stamina is being tested. Uh, and so it's no shock that God would impress strongly on my heart via an endurance. Just keep running the race. Um, you know, let go of some things uh, that easily weigh us down. And that's the other thing that that scripture talks about. Lay off every weight that easily weighs you down and besets you. Maybe there's some things in this season that didn't cause you to get tired or exhausted. But in this season, um, maybe there's some things that we need to kind of let go of for now so that you can keep running the race with endurance. What little things can you do today that's going to help you keep going tomorrow? When you work on your endurance, you will see the results. If you're never tested, you will never know what you're capable of. And if you never learn to trust God, you don't know what he's capable of. Galatians 6 and 9, it says, Let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time, we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. God doesn't want us to give up. We can't give up. We need to keep going farther. We need to keep pressing in to him and being able to say, God, like I trust you. I'm going farther and I'm going to take back that joy and I'm going to take back that peace because I'm not letting the enemy win this fight. And maybe there's some people around you today that are fear, feeling weary and will doing. I pray that you will continue to fight that fight, that you will be encouragement, that your, that your courage will be contagious, that your joy will be contagious, that people around you that you see that may be too exhausted to go on, that I pray that the strength of God in you will ignite their hearts with hope so that they too can have that joy and that peace. People just want you to be real. They just want people to care about them. They don't care about your programs or, or how, how well articulate you say something. They just want you to care. What is it that you're facing in your life right now, in your school, at home, that you see this obstacle that is not going away? Clearly, I'm still in this chair, so I had to find another way to drive or I just was not going to be driving. I found that there was another way. I had realized that I could make extraordinary things become an ordinary, everyday occurrence. How's that possible? What does that even mean? Well, the doctors told me, Vian, you will never walk again. And that you're going to need full-time care forever. So I was like, oh man, all these things that I'm told that I can't do. But when I started driving and I started realizing that there were some things that I could do, I'm not going to focus on what the doctors are telling me. I'm not going to focus on all the things that you say I can't do. Do you know what? When I, I, I stood, when I, when I stood for the first time, that was extraordinary. I was like, oh my goodness, this is exciting because I, like months before, was paralyzed. I needed two people to turn me over in bed and, and get me dressed every day. So getting dressed or standing, just forget it. So, thank you. So when I stood for the first time, that was extraordinary. But when I started walking, and if I go over the stage, one of you guys in the front will pick me up, right? When I started walking, standing became so what? Ordinary. So I did that thing that the doctors said I would never do. 
And so I don't know who's telling you that you can't do something, and maybe that person is you. But you can make extraordinary things every day became ordinary, become ordinary. Do you find that if you're around someone that's really hyper and excited, that it gets you excited as well? Like it's, it's kind of contagious, isn't it? Like you're around somebody that's really happy. Do you know the opposite is true? When you're around a negative person? Well, that was the thing that I started realizing in my life that when I started seeing that my courage had the power to encourage other people, that was a whole new way to live. We all have the power to like find another way around a solution and to make extraordinary things seem ordinary in our everyday. To create the right environment for success. But you know what, it's not enough to just, I hope that things will get better. It's about making the choices to make a plan to be from where you are to step into where you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. Okay guys, here we are at the end of this 12 days of Christmas. I have had so much fun and I'm so excited to have brought you these 12 days of Christmas. I hope that you've been encouraged and inspired by these videos. And so let's count it down with me. You know I'm gonna. So what have I given you over these 12 days? Today, I've given you 12 thoughts to ponder. I've given you 11 video bloopers, 10 acts of kindness, nine night of courage singers, eight stories of courage, seven just because, six words of wisdom, five featured friends, four moments of hope, three facts about joy, two hours of courage, and the meaning of Christmas. Oh, I've had so much fun. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourself and each other.